Welcome back, my name is Adrian, uh, you can call me Tag Animations if you want, if you so choose to, and this is another episode of the How to Create Your Own Scene from Scratch tutorial series. Um, so, last episode, we went over how to um, texture everything, import everything, um, find really good maps, and stuff like that. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to go one step further and we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to put in some general lighting in here and make things look a little bit better. <clears throat> so, again, if you don't have my, um, my preset pack, don't freak out if, um, you know, you can't follow along, along just yet. Um, a lot of this stuff is free, so I'm going to try to use a lot of the free stuff and explain the other stuff. So, um, don't be too, like, oh my gosh, she's using different stuff, I don't know, how do I get that stuff, stuff like that. Um, there will be a link in the description if you, if you need to get there really easily, or you can go to selfie.com slash tag animations. Okay, so, I have this thing in, only in my consolidate preset pack. Uh, called GI outdoor lighting and basically that's just a different a whole bunch of different sky textures right with luminance on them to simulate realistic sky lighting so for instance I like to do sunsets because they provide like the most uh, color to a scene so I'm gonna be using that for right now uh, maybe something different later on um, Actually, yeah, let's use something different, actually. We're going to use this one instead. Okay. So, let me explain how this skylighting works exactly. Uh, I'm going to move this to, like, right here. So that way, more sun shines this way. Uh, so, basically, what this is, in all honesty, is just a texture with a filter channel. So, that way, you can change the color of it and luminance you put that in luminance and you go to illumination you turn on gi area light and bam you have instant lighting as long as you have global illumination turned on so what that does um you can do a quick quick render uh turn gi on global illumination has to be on and you can see already we have pretty decent lighting now we don't have shadows and stuff and stuff like that but you can tell that there's some nice lighting going on um, just for the ambience and stuff so that's good that's what we want then um, we're gonna go up we don't want to search to stop searching um, so after that we are going to find sun preset. Remember, if you don't have this stuff, don't worry. A lot of this stuff is free besides the skylighting. But now that you know how to do that, you can just go on Google. If you just search up uh, sky HDR or something like that, you'll get um, some really nice images that you can use for your scene um, like this or... Um, you know, even if you put in like a uh, sky sunset, oops, sunset, you put this in your scene, and what you can do, um, if you don't want it to be like shown, say you have like, um, I'll show you guys really quickly. What you could do is uh, say this image looks really fake. Like if you put it in your scene, it would look really fake because of all the clouds and stuff. But say you want the lighting from it. So what you would do is you get this, you'd save it, and then you'd uh, make a sky, right? So we're just gonna do the same thing we have here. We're gonna put this on here, and then we're gonna go to the compositing tag, and we're gonna say we don't wanna see it through the camera. What that's gonna do is it will still be seen in like reflections and stuff and seen by GI, so global, global illumination, but you won't see it in your camera. 
then you can just go and go to something like physical sky right turn off sun so that you only have the sky and then turn like the where's the gradient uh, there used to be oh the gradient right here you turn off physical sky and you get a gradient and what you can do now is you can just like go over here and kind of do like some of the same colors and then you can see that you have like this same kind of coloration but you, you're not gonna see the thing and then when you render you'll have the GI so that's a quick easy way to, to kind of fake um, or not show your actual lighting so just keep that in mind uh, okay so we have the Sun preset and we are going to just roll right in um, should be fairly simple if you've used my presets before um, the only advice I give to those who haven't is um, trust me they're pretty easy um, so don't freak out please don't freak out uh, the only thing you have to do with um, my presets though um, my Sun preset is you got to go to project settings and put this on huge and then you'll be able to see the lines and you'll be able to see the Sun um, somewhere there it is so since we have our Sun here we can kind of position it where we want um, what I like to do is I like to keep it in the camera frame but keep it away kind of so I like to move the sky so you use this to move your sky texture I like to move it like to the side or wherever my Sun's gonna be and then I like to move my Sun where that's at so for instance it'll be right there that way I can still get some of the volumetrics and rays and stuff um, but it won't be seen and then I just turn the Sun off because that's really annoying so now that we have the Sun in our scene we can make things a little bit brighter uh, we can turn up some of the ambience but I don't like doing that right now so we'll do this another thing I like to do is um, a lot of times I like to put in a vi environment but sadly I can't do that this time because my clouds preset doesn't work uh, with environments right now so I'll teach you later on um, how to use an environment but for this particular map I cannot um, for for outdoor scenes you shouldn't really use environment the only time you should use environment is really for like well if you're not going to use clouds then you should use environment most of the time um, but environment basically limits this would be like a quick mini tutorial um, environment kind of like limit it makes like fog so you can create this really cool like minecrafty effect so when you get closer you can see things but when you get further away things start to fade in the distance and it's pretty cool um, usually I'll up this to like what is it uh, 10 no 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 5 Oh, 10, yeah, 100, whatever. And then I like to turn this to like a bluish color. Or not all the time, not uh, blue, like a lightish bluish color. And that kind of simulates like some fogginess. Um, sometimes if I don't use, um, if I want to use environment, but I don't want fog, I usually just click this off. And you see this top one. This top one is basically just like an ambient light but I think it's a little bit better because it goes through everything so it kinda turns everything that's like really dark blue and then I usually just turn this to like 20 so that way nothing's really ever like black you get like this nice subtle blue and so I don't know if I can use this exactly but we'll check I don't know if I can use that with uh, my clouds preset so so right now we have something that looks like this let's render that really quick so we can see that there's shadows now because of the Sun really nice looking um, then we have that ambient from the 
um, sky, which is really nice. That's why I use them in com combination because um, they really do look nice. And then our reflections look r really weird there, so we're gonna have to probably turn them down. Um, so yeah, this is this is how you you start to go around stuff. Later on, when I start ta talking about volumetric lighting and stuff like that, um, I don't think there's gonna be really too much of that in this uh, tutorial, only because there's really not really anything to make volumetric. But in tutorials, other tutorials, I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, this is more of a, a just basic um, how to do stuff. Um, for most beginners and stuff like that, so Okie dokie So basically that's I kind of stopped it, but um, That's a, that's our result so far um, What else I like to do is Trying to think Should I do it should I not do it? Yeah, I will do it a lot of times on top of the environment I like to bring this way back right um, go to details fall off like this put this to like 2000 bring it up so and turn this to dark blue and this kind of gives a, a little bit better of an effect than the environment will do I use this quite I use this kind of um, strategy quite often so uh, just trying to position this light you notice how things turn a little bit bluer and that's what we want we want a lot of these shadows and stuff to um, or dark areas to be a little bit blue and hopefully this will give us that effect put this to like 3000 so uh, also another quick tip uh, let me make a new thing so basically uh, if you don't know about lighting and stuff so basically this is your basic light right so you think that it's pretty realistic but it's actually not if you put um, if you go to details and you put fall off to physically accurate or accurate sorry I say it weird that will give you like the best that will give you realistic lighting I don't know if most people do that but um, for realistic lighting you want to use physically accurate inverse square um, it pro provides a really nice effect um, it, it really does make sure uh, help that uh, things look really nice in your scene so let me show you the difference between physically accurate and without physically accurate. So we're going to turn this off and you can see it'll turn it on and it looks good. You know why? That's because based off the distance, it's basing off the distance where light will decay. And as light go bounces off and goes further, it fades off like in real life. So that's a quick little tutorial. Otherwise, when you have just this regular light, um, so we're gonna turn this off if you have just a regular light infinitely just or infinitely just goes on you can see that there's really no fall off it just kind of goes on so that's something to look um, to think about when you're making your scenes and um, you you know you're not using physically accurate stuff and you still see things in the foreground and everything still getting um, still getting light that's probably why you're not using physically accurate um, lights so always keep that in mind this light looks a little too blue so we're gonna just take it down to like 80% um, maybe a little less actually we're just gonna take in out the environment and we're just gonna keep this light um, it's an easy way just to do stuff another thing you can do is you can always uh, turn this to ambient light and you'll I don't think you can see it yet but if you do this you can also get that same effect so that's what we're gonna use um, there we go so now most of our shadows look kind of blue oops I don't know what I just did there okay 
Um, so now most of our shadows look pretty blue. Next thing we gotta do is we're gonna load in um, the cloud preset, right? Now this one I still have to kind of fix with positioning, um, but we should be able to still get the same nice effect. You gotta kind of zoom out for this and look down, is it down? There it is, it's over there. Come over here, baby. Come over here, cloud preset. No, bad cloud preset. There we go. Okay, we got one cloud right there. Doesn't wanna show its face. There we go. This, this. Okay, so we're gonna go back in here so that we can see what's going on. We're gonna make a camera. See, making a camera it kind of anchors you it helps you to to see what's going on and you can see we're gonna turn off group two and group three or group one no we're just gonna turn off group two and group three and we're gonna push this a little bit forward um, and we're gonna make these 20. So now we get these really nice big clouds um, in our scene, really easy to do with my preset. Um, and then we're gonna click render to see what that kind of looks like. Um, another thing we're gonna do is actually in the sun preset, we're gonna, since this camera is our anchor, we're gonna have the sun preset focus on this camera. So that's what we're doing there. And we're gonna render that really quick. And you can see it's starting to look really nice. You get all these kind of volumetric lights or volumetric uh, clouds in. Uh, they're kind of taking on the same lighting. Uh, you don't have that much of a reflection thing here anymore. Kind of right there, but not really. Um, you get this nice bright light going on the, um, the scales of justice as they're called in Maya Night and stuff like that so that's pretty good and then as you'll see as you didn't see in the last one you'll get a lens flare too and uh, brightness here in a second <clears throat> so as that renders out or maybe you won't because my render settings yeah they don't have what was what was supposed to happen is basically if you do this uh, render active this you get this so uh and our clouds look a little bit could probably use a few more clouds so we're gonna up this to like seven on both kind of position the clouds so they're like this and we're gonna render that one more time and hopefully we can call it wraps after that um and then go on to the next tutorial next monday so this is a great way to create really fast lighting um, in like, you know, less than 20 minutes because uh, if you have a sky that will give you your ambient, so all this lighting over here would just be from the sky so you don't have any like really dark shadows or anything. And then some preset or any kind of lighting would create, um, create your secondary lights and stuff. So it's a great way to combine two different light things, uh, two different light sources into one thing to make your scene look really nice. And you can see that we're getting a lot of that volumetric kind of lens flare look like that. So that'll be it for this uh, episode. Hopefully if you guys liked and you enjoyed it or you guys want to see something else uh, later in the future, let me know because I do want to keep this series going. And uh, definitely, if you guys have any questions, I do want to go over them. So, um, yeah.